Okay, today we're at my regular house I started at, and today we're going to talk about is some projects you can build. The top 10 projects I come up with a list that I, I have done. And I put a slideshow together, so I hope you enjoy it. So here it goes. Okay, here's the first one, the TV oscilloscope. It's a very simple circuit and you really don't have to do very much to it. You can build the, the circuit you see up there is optional. It's only if you want to make it accurate to measuring signals. If you just like use this to measure sound or display sound like the Avalon pictures like there with the music, like the guy has with the iPod, it hooked up to it to display its music on the screen and then you don't need that you just hook it up direct the, the coils directly up to the uh, to 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 the TV sound amplifier and it will one of the speakers to that and then you can hook up the white or red to whatever to your white or red connectors that are the back of the TV to to your computer CD player, DVD player, anything they want to measure sound with. And here's over here in the black boxes you see on the TV screens in there. These are the types of screens you'll see when you cut chopping the cords off and you're leaving them on. And we're, we're with some of them missing. It shows you what the, how the output of the screen should look like. If you have all of them disconnected, or at least both of, or one of each coil, you get a dot in the center of the screen. If you uh, chop off the vertical wire, then you get a horizontal line. I, yeah, horizontal. Then if you chop off one horizontal wire, you get a vertical line, like, like, it, like it shows there. And these here exists that all this can be bought for 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 nothing. And TV don't have to fully work. It it could be one that had that, that let's say something happened to the TV tuner speaker or anything like that, or it's not doing it, or or maybe 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 something else. You 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 can still use it. But the thing is, this circuit, this type of thing is a kind of something you won't be able to do with today's TVs because uh, today's TVs are not using this type not using a CRT TV they're using a uh, flat screen LCD and plasma for usually down nowadays and LEDs type screens so it won't work with today's type TV screen types Next up is a sound card oscilloscope. This here is very simple. It just it just takes very few components, and this will actually probably cost less than it would to build the uh, sound of TV oscilloscope. The thing is, it's not that accurate, and the thing is, it's probably something you don't want to deal with a computer, and it, it where where where, 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 it, where if you input it too much voltage, you could break the computer. Anyway, if you do the sound card, that's your speed, and you have less chance of doing it, but you still you could do it. Unless you get one of isolated USB boxes that isolate the USB from one it, from the computer to the app. And the weird thing is, I put this in a file companion, I put the formula there, and you can see that question mark this was supposed to be equal and this question mark this was supposed to be a plus sign it must have did that because it must have been a weird symbol maybe it didn't know what the font it was using I have no idea usually it don't do that this circuit is very simple this, this the resistor with the arrow pointing at, at it right on this one right here R2 is is, is your voltage adjustment resistor it uh, just not voltage adjustment resistor voltage adjustment divider 
it, it, what it does is it adjusts the dividing of the voltage divider. It's like a variable voltage divider. I like to call it for what it's real name is called. And it goes to these two diodes that are anti-parallel. One going one way, one going the other way. This is so that when, when that, when you when it, when Kurt flows short, it'll short out one of them, but it only really leaves the voltage drop available that can go through the rest of the circuit to the output. This is so that the voltage don't get high enough to break the computer. This is about 0.6 or 0.7 volts. Uh, well, the computer can handle up to one volt peak AC. I think RMS, I'm not for sure. And they have three wires. You might want to get the ones that have the RCA connectors, the yellow, the white, and red connectors on it. Because those have thick wire and they're easy to solder with. And then R1 is just a current limit resistor. And that's your sound card oscilloscope. Next one is a sound card RCL meter, which stands for resistor, capacitor, and inductor. Why the hell is it instead of I? It's because when inductors are on a, on a systematic, they don't begin with I. Instead, they begin with L. I believe that's because if they had I on it, it would kind of look, look like it's for current. You're talking about current, the light of little I. Anyway, What we got here is we got this here. This is a trimming resistor that trims that uh, calibrates it, and it lets you measure capacitors, resistors, and inductors with it for testing them on the computer. To the sound card, another sound card device, just like we had a sound card oscilloscope. This is just like it, except this one here generates a signal for testing components, and you can test it with the line in. It has to be lying in, it cannot be microphone. This is because microphone is usually mono and it's not stereo. Mono, and mono means one, one, one speaker, stereo means two speakers or two channels. Anyway, the device on the test right here is where you cut the capacitor, inductor, or resistor to, and the program will measure it for you. And it'll tell you what it is. You have to calibrate it. It only takes a few components, which is nice. If you try buying a RCL meter, it usually costs more than this. In fact, that once I get the parts, I'm going to be building one for my store to sell, so you can so you so you can use it there. Anyway, let's go on to the next one. Okay, this one here is a serial port high light flasher. This will flash, uh, flash holiday lights that use house current or to a relay. This is uh, this here has to be careful with because if you put the put let's say mains into let's say mains into this lead or this lead or any of these, you could break it. But if, but if you do it the way it's shown here, you won't. So make sure you wire up the relay correctly. Otherwise, the computer may break, fuse may pop, anything could happen that you don't want happening. Anyway, he, we, we, we got here for the serial port output, you choose output pin for the serial port. It can be DTR or RTS with a standard. DTR sensor data terminal ready. It's a pin on the serial port. The other one is RTS essential request to send. It sends logic one or zero to turn the thing on and off. And with that, you, you, you can flash lights on it. I did it before with it. I even built a tiny box on it you can get. But it doesn't come with the serial cord unless maybe I well, I'll put maybe I'll put put one on there for it. 
But the thing is, you probably want to do it since it does this power by USB. You probably want to get it with isolated so it doesn't input the mix it. Or maybe put a diode in it or something. Not sure. Anyway. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, what we got here is a lab bench power supply. Made out of a regular computer power supply, ATX. We got, with, with this one, it has a good feature on it called the overload buzzer. Which does is it'll buzz if you, if, if the power supply shuts off for a short circuit or something. Or something bad happened with the power supply during the when it was on. Could be overloaded circuit, voltage overload, anything like that. It, what happen is if it shuts off, the stream point always explains to you how this will work. When it runs, when this switch is on, this power switch will on, we give it ground, voltage will be over here to turn this transistor on, and instead of power going to this buzzer, go to this resistor, do the transistor. And it'll short out to it so it won't go to the buzzer. Now let's say a short circuit happened and the power supply shut off that voltage. But left the but will always leave the five volt standby on. The the voltage will go to the resistor and then it'll go to the buzzer and the buzzer will sound. This is because uh, the buzzer. This is because the transistor ain't switched on. When it's not switched on, it will it will not uh, not let current flow through. It's like a switch that's controlled by a voltage. It's like a logic gate. And it's comparing this, the green wire and the orange wire. Orange wire is 3.3 volts, and the green wire is the power on one, and it's supposed to detect negative on that wire. Once the negative's on it, and there's a positive one on the 3.3 volt one, then, then, then the buzz won't sound. But if that 3.3 volt one uh, gets, uh, nothing on it then it will sound also with, with any power supply nowadays you're going to have to put a load resistor on it and the load resistor you, can, you don't have to use a load resistor you can use a 6 volt light bulb if you wanted to but it has to be a good light bulb that draws light 4.7 ohm 10 watt resistor should do and It doesn't have to be 10 watt, it could be less than that, but that's what I use on mine. It could probably be 5. I think it could be 5 watt, I think. And, and it ain't over here that's boxed up at the color codes in for each wire. You can find these files on my website under the Metal File uh, Center, which I have all my notes I've been whitening up and stuff like that. So you can see about what give you ideas on what to build and stuff. Anyway, in Q1 could be a generic NPN low low power NPN transistor. It could be a two N two 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 A and two N three nine oh four any of those kind. Ding 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 basically just chop the end off on when the um, Ones that go in the computer and side of wires onto it, and you can plow power anything you want from it. I even wonder if I could. I wonder if at um, my wood burn, wood working class, if I can actually burn, took a power supply and buy a one from, you know, from for a computer and then take it apart and put it, take, out, take all the boards out, maybe put it into like a wooden one. You have to be careful with it, because you may be able to drill some holes for the air to flow through. Usually, if you're not powering that... Powering that high, high current through it, you don't have to worry about things overheating. It's usually when, it, when it's drawing a lot of current. 
or heat up. So basically you won't have to worry about that. I'll have to try that. That's a good idea. Okay, here we go. Here's here's our ignition coil power supply. It's very simple. It doesn't need that very much. It doesn't cost that very much and you can get it from a car you had, like I got mine from, from a van that we had that broke down had very many problems with it that we decided to ditch the whole thing so what we did is I took out the the, the ignition coil since they cost a lot to get at, at, at AutoZone or they careful all parts and stuff like that and it doesn't have to be one of them that has has just one. If it has multiple ones, you can use one out of it, or so, or maybe try experimenting hooking up two of them in series or in parallel. They use them for, I think, the engines use them for multiple spark plugs, because engines can have multiple spark plugs nowadays that take it, and so so, so that they have multiple ignition coils inside that box. This here is showing you that simple three pin one one that has input and output for voltages and then ground for both signals it doesn't have to be like that it can be separated where the ground in this is connected to, to the one of them you have to experiment with it you probably have to buy one of them manuals that talk, talk about that tune type of car you're using that ignition coil from it will then explain that on how it's wired and stuff and how you can, how you can, uh, how how it works. And then with that, then on that you be able to build power supply like this. You will need the dimmer switch. Do not forget to put the dimmer switch in it. We're not talking about using the dimmer switch lowering the up or boosting the power with it. And if you leave it out, it's just gonna have it maximum power. It will not. If you don't have that dimmer switch there. It will fly, it could possibly fly the ignition coil. Or the ignition coil won't do anything, I'm not sure. But I know one thing, you'll need that demo switch. Uh, it's because the demo switch converts is a sine wave. You know, the, the sine wave that goes like this into square waves, into pulses. And it, it can adjust that. It. It's like pulse with modulation. Anyway, there's motor capacitor here. You'll need that for 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 limiting the current and also only allowing AC to flow through, not DC, because capacitors will do that. And the wires down here in this circle here are the are, are the high voltage output wires. The one on the left is ground, the one on the right is positive. And I put this triangle here to let you know that you have to be careful when building it and using it. Because it is high voltage. It can hurt you. Anyway, let's go on to the next one. Okay, here is the USB charger. You can charge it from a car, you can charge it from most anything. Here's what you need, at least to charge it. You need positive 5 volts at least. It can be negative 5 volts, so you just reverse the way you put it. But anyway, 5 volts, positive 5 volts, and You need a USB cord that fits it. Or you can get a USB extension cord. And just chop one end off that there's a female USB end on it. And then you solder it into your circuit. Here's a step down USB charger that, that can be used for uh, power supplies or even the car. You do a cigarette light and stuff like that. The, they go to this. If you use it to the car one and the power supply one, it should put 
put C1 in there, a capacitor in there. And I put on those two asterisks, asterisks on there to let you know that on it, saying that higher capacitance is better, but not too high where a high current is drawn. That means you get too much capacitance on there, a current could go high. But not really. You have to get way really higher in capacitance. Like you have to get in the farads, at least one farad or two farad, not micro farads, where it's less than that. Anyway, this regulator does the trick of with with stepping it down. It's a voltage regulator. Um, seven eight oh five is a five volt voltage regulator. That will step it down and, and make it where you can power your cell phone off of off of it without being too high. And then over here is a bypass capacitor, 100 nanofarad or 0 0.1 microfarad work. The red wire goes it goes to USB red wire, black wire here. The black wire goes into the black wire of the USB pin 4. Then you have pin 2 and 3 go to tie together. You just solder those together, make a short to it. And then over here, I have is a diagram that show you how to use an LM317 instead of a 7805. And it requires a couple more components, just two resistors. But that's it. If you can't get a 705 but have an LM317, here is one an interesting thing. It's called Octopus Component Tester. It's a it's a, it's a tester that acts like a curve tracer, which allows you to measure current and it's a graphs current by the current is the y axis and the x axis is your voltage for from the component you're testing under the red and black probes. You just hook the horizontal and vertical ones to your oscilloscope leads, and then and then measure it from there. It'll, it'll graph a, like a like a slope line for resistor, a circle and for capacitor, inductor, showing impedance, and and some other stuff for different components like diodes, transistors. You can test LEDs, zener diodes, all of those with these with with just this octopus component tester. And it only uses a transformer to convert a sine wave. Step down the, to a small voltage sine wave. Uses these two R1 and R2 resistors are used for the voltage divider. So it divides it out to one volt AC so it don't harm anything. Then R3 is a R3 is a current sense resistor I believe. Current limit resistor, yeah, current limit resistor, it limits current. Anyway, it's a very simple component, component test you can do. If you have a oscilloscope that's dual channel or has X or Y mode on it, you can do this. Have a TV that doesn't have the yellow, white, and red, and you need it for. Your games for your uh, DVD player, Blu-ray player, or even your game system, but don't have uh, but don't have it. But you have uh, at least one of these around, ones that hook into the game system. Well, here's a simple simple hack you can use to be able to uh, hook them up. We just build an RF modulator from it. Take your RF unit after make an RF modulator. It's very simple. All you gotta do is just find a pinout for, for your game system for the AV connector. There will be a voltage. You'll need a power supply for it or batteries. Make sure if you use batteries, you do not have it on all the time, otherwise they'll drain it. And and make sure if you use the phone power supply, you probably won't get a capacitor. Hook up in parallel with the power supply rails. This is so that. It can filter out any spikes in your AC line from going into the uh, 
for going into to the to the TV and stuff and making the picture look all not clear. So what you do is you cut the end off and pry, pry these metal things back. Why not see your probes and reaching there into the pins. And just match with, with wire, with the color wire, right down the color wire, which will pin goes where. And you'll figure it out. Just like I did. I did it a couple of times with the same adapter. And it works. I like to say the Dreamcast one because it, cause it this one here I know works with the 5 volt one so I could make it one off USB or 5 volt wall wart if I wanted to. Wall wart is another word for uh, AC adapter. Finally we're on our last and 10th project. It's a passive Ethernet tap. It's a very simple network device that lets you tap into a, a cable between two devices, the internet cable, and then it lets you see what data is going through it, what packets are going to send through back and forth. This lets you spy on it and see what data it has. This is because we're using the, the receive pair going to just, just receiving data from it, and if you use Wireshark or Smart sniff to be able to uh, be able to see the data, and it works pretty well. I have done it myself. You can do it. You, you, can, you can do it as well. It doesn't require very much to it. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, and hope you decide to get ideas from this about building it. Oh yeah, another thing I haven't forgot to tell you about these capacitors. That are connected to pin 4 and 5, and there's another capacitor that connected to 7 and 8. What they used to do is they make it where they, it doesn't use a gigabit, since you can't monitor a gigabit of data speed, it has to be less than that. It has to be 100 up to 100 megabits at least at, at the most. But that ain't, that, that's kind of, that's fast enough to do anything you want to. It doesn't have to be a gigabit. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed it. That, and that, the, what the capacitors do is they degrade the signal on it. They'll short out the the uh, the 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 one gigabit pins, causing the computer to think that it can't send gigabit signals to it, so it sends a hundred megabit one. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Hope you like it.